Welcome to Standard Mass Problem of the Week. For this week's problem, we have uh, this equation that we want to solve in uh, natural numbers, or we want to describe what n has to be in natural numbers. So given x, y, p, k, all natural numbers, uh, p is an odd prime, n is greater than 1 and odd, we want to prove that n has to be a power of p in this equation. So the first thing we're going to do is factor the left side. So because n is odd, we can factor like this. And so uh, from this equation, note that because uh, x and y are natural numbers, this has to be greater than 1. Uh, same with this thing here. This will also have to be greater than 1. So both of these have factors of p in them. So that tells us So we know x plus y is congruent to 0 mod p. We know x to the n minus 1 minus y, x to the n minus 2 dot 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 plus y to the n minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p as well. And then uh, using the top equation, we can plug that into the bottom equation and get something like So because x plus y is congruent to 0, each of these individual terms, like minus y x to the n minus 2 plus y squared x to the n minus 3, all these terms are just going to be congruent to x to the n minus 1. Because if we plug in you know, uh, minus x for y, we get x times x to the n minus 2, which is x to the n minus 1. Uh, so we have n times x to the n minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Now if x uh, has any factors of p in it, then y has to have factors of p in it. And then uh, in this case, we could just uh, factor out any factors of p and reduce this equation to an equation where x and y are, have no factors of p in them. So we're going to, uh, so we don't need to worry about the case where x is divisible by p. So this leads us to conclude that n must, in fact, be divisible by, divisible by p. So. So in this case, n must be some multiple of p. So if we plug that back into our original equation, so now we can write the equation in the form x to the p to the t plus y to the p to the t equals p to the k. So we can say x to the p is kind of a, a new x, call it x prime. y to the p is a new y, called y prime. And we can repeat this procedure with t and conclude that t must be divisible by p as well. And we can do this an infinite amount of times until uh, t has no more, until we uh, factor out all the factors of p and n. But then if there's a factor left over that is not divisible by p, then that contradicts uh, this procedure. So we conclude, in fact, n must be some power of p by just repeating this procedure and realizing that it implies that it must, whenever we can repeat it, it must be divisible by p. So once we divide out all the factors of p, we're left with just one, at which point we cannot repeat this procedure. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, check out standardmath.org, check out our blog, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you.